Good morning. Welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to online worship this eighth Sunday in the season of Pentecost. I'm Pastor Lori Arroyo, interim pastor at our Savior's Lutheran Church in Long Beach, California. And we begin with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. All the readings and the worship for today are listed on the ELCA's Worship in the Home blog at the ELCA uh, website, which you can find posted on our Facebook page. Each week I choose a reading, uh, one passage for the week to read and to offer a reflection. And this morning we hear from the Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The dominion of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make their nests in its branches. Jesus told them another parable. The dominion of heaven is like a yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The dominion of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the dominion of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the dominion of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into the baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And Jesus said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the dominion of heaven is like a householder who brings out of the household treasure what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And so we end the month of July with Matthew's Jesus speaking in more parables. Are they getting a little bit easier to decipher, I wonder, after uh, several weeks of looking at them? Jesus asks his disciples, have you understood all this? To which they quickly reply, yes. Is that true for us? For Matthew, the kingdom of heaven is not some abstract place where you go when you die. Rather, for this gospel writer, it is the time and the place where God's will is done perfectly. Often the reality of that is called the now and the not yet. Jesus announces and actually lives this kingdom as he breaks into our human history to reveal this as good news for those who are not fulfilled with what this life has to offer, which I think could be said for most of us these days. For those who are satisfied, selling everything to acquire a single perfect pearl, no matter how treasured, seems outrageous. Would you really give up everything you have for one small gem? Maybe. These are some of the days where values are being challenged and tested in new ways. But to those who are frustrated with what they have been able to secure in this earthly life or with the ideals of this culture or the injustices of our society or the way that some are labeled and typecast, finding truth and value and authentic purpose 
is the way of life that Jesus offers. The gospel, or the good news that Jesus announces, is something worth buying at any cost. I was asked this week, what is the difference between faith and trust? I had to really think about it, because we talk so easily in Christian circles about faith in this and faith in that. But where does trust come in? These stories that Matthew writes proclaim that faith in the kingdom of God is often about seeing something that the world does not, about finding value in what others may find insignificant. Once our eyes are opened to what is valuable in God's eyes, we cannot turn away. Therefore, trust becomes that act that we take when our eyes are opened and we see God's kingdom a bit more clearly. As one writer put it, it's as if you've been invited into a secret that not everyone knows. So have you understood all this? And even if your answer is no, we can recognize when what the world has to offer feels empty. We know that profound yearning in our hearts that longs to be filled even more profoundly these days. God's kingdom is now and not yet, even as we pray for it to come. In the meantime, we pray for it to be fully present and live as if it were with faith and trust. Amen. From our many and varied locations, yet held in one body by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need, responding to each petition with the words from Psalm 119, Be gracious to us. Let us pray. For the church, O God of mercy, we pray. Open your word to Christians around the world. Reveal yourself to us in ways both traditional and surprising, in places old and new. Bless our bishops, pastors, deacons, and other church leaders as they face their challenging tasks. Turn us, O God, be gracious to us. For education and nurture in the church, O God of wisdom, we pray. Give us the will to seek your wisdom. Guide the many churches in their uses of technology and show us during this time ways to study your word. We pray this week as we commemorate J.S. Bach and other musicians, accompany all church musicians as they seek to help the church offer its praise. Turn to us, O God, be gracious to us. For the earth, O creative God, we pray, Give to plants and animals the water and land they require. Form us into grateful and healing caretakers of your earth. Bless the efforts of scientists and researchers, especially those seeking a vaccine. Lead all people to honor the scientific discoveries that you grant to humankind. Turn to us, O God. Be gracious to us. For the nations, O God of justice, we pray. Direct leaders of nations to build trust with each other and to resist the ways of violence. Stifle the lust for conquest, bring peace to the Middle East, visit the people of Hong Kong, move us away from racist attitudes and policies, form our president, governor, and legislators to speak with honesty, to strive for justice, and to work to alleviate the nation's needs. Turn to us, O God, be gracious to us. For all in need, O God of compassion, we pray. Heal the sick, feed the hungry, house the refugee, comfort the countless thousands who are dealing with the coronavirus, accompany those living with anxiety and despair, form us to be your arms of mercy. Turn to us, O God, be gracious to us. For the youth, O God of grace, we pray. Give to the youth of afflicted nations an inspiring dream of what their future might be. Give them patience to await a time of safety. 
direct all schools from daycare through graduate schools to find an acceptable way forward. Turn to us, O God, be gracious to us. You, O God, are our pearl beyond price. You are the tree giving us eternal refuge. Hear now, we pray, the petitions of our hearts. Turn to us, O God, be gracious to us. In gratitude for the lives of our beloved dead, we pray that nothing, neither death nor life, will separate us from your love. At the end, gather us with all your saints in light everlasting. Turn to us, O God, be gracious to us. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of God's peace. Let us pray. O word of God incarnate, O wisdom from on high, O truth unchanged, unchanging, O light in our dark sky, we praise you for the radiance that from the hallowed page, a lantern to our footsteps shines on from age to age. Gathered into one wherever we are today by the Holy Spirit, let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The church announcements for today are listed on our Facebook page. They're also sent out every Friday via a constant contact email. If you'd like to start receiving our emails, please call the church office and provide us with your information. And now, hear God's blessing for you. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. Send forth your Spirit, O God, and renew the face of the earth. Amen. Go in peace and share the good news. Thanks be to God.